Hello everyone, welcome to EliteWithDesoCast.com YouTube channel. Uh, so, uh, I will be looking at the GTXJ uh, for today. This is a gold miners ETF, the junior, right? So, the miners have been really um, underperforming the rest of the market for so many years already. Um, uh, we can see the GTXJ has been completely dead uh, since 2016, more or less. Look at this, it's been um, without any, uh, you know, activity for uh, seven years, right? And again, when things are looking like this, uh, it's really hard for anybody to uh, suddenly try to pick the timing or when it's going to rally again uh, or when it's going to get out or you know move out break out from the range I mean we might as well keep range trading for another six years right like who knows right uh, so for now though I'm gonna explain a couple of things uh, with the GTXJ and uh, about the risk to reward and so on now obviously uh, there is a lot more trending instrument out there in the market right now and so really uh, this is only for you who are who have a firm belief in the bullish precious metals uh, and if the gold starts to rally higher, eventually the miners will, will also follow as long as gold can continue to extend higher, right? Okay, so let's take a look from the monthly time frame. So we got this massive um, decline here, which basically bottomed out in 2016 at $16. Now from here, you can clearly see so far it's only 3 years up, right? Without any extension on the third swing. So you might say, well, can it be uh, EBC then because there is no extension and it's only three waves? And the answer is, well, yes, it is possible, but think about it this way. This rally here is not part of the same cycle, right? I mean, this cycle ended here. You can clearly see this is in terms of time and distribution, how long it takes for this rally. It has nothing to do, it got nothing to do with this decline here. So this decline here is considered to be one cycle and this rally here is considered to be another cycle, right? So this cycle ended here bottoming at 1614 and then you have another cycle. So think about it for a moment. Uh, the way we forecast is the following. Now, it doesn't always, um, you know, come out to be what we expect all the time, but probability wise, uh, this is something that we follow and gives us a higher probability overall. And that is the following. If, let's say for now, if we assume we're gonna break 1614 again, because, because basically you're saying that, okay, this is three years rally, can it be just a correction and then we break down? It's theoretically it's possible, right? ABC and then breaks down. But then since this is a different cycle, if it breaks down, we have what we call a lower low sequence here, right? So we got a lower low because this cycle ended here and then you have another cycle and then you have another cycle that breaks below the previous low. So you get three cycles here as a lower low and in this kind of structure, uh, again, probability wise, not always, not 100%, probability wise, you can go to 100%, uh, which is kind of like what we expect as a minimum when it is uh, a three swings pullback or a three swings rally, right? Whether you call it ABC or WXY or one, two, three, it usually will reach 100%. Sometimes it can truncate, it fails. So I don't deny that. But again, probability wise, we always would go with the idea as a standard sort of expectation, standard forecast that when you have a high, high, low, low, it should go to the 100% more likely, more often than not. Okay. So think about it, if we break below then, right? If we consider this to be ABC and break below, the problem is when we try to do this extension analysis, we run out of space in the sense that the 100% is gonna go below zero, negative 96. Then obviously it's not logical to assume GTXJ ETF will go to minus, 90, minus 96, right? So that means we are running out of space on the downside here. Now, like I said, sometimes it can do that, truncate without reaching 100%, and then, uh, you know, let's say just like this and like this. Yes, yeah, something like that happens with lower probability, right? With lower probabilities. That's why we don't do what is lower probability as a standard forecast, all right? So that's why we think that, okay, it doesn't make sense if it breaks below 1614 again, uh, because we don't really forecast truncation. 
So that means we will assume this is a significant low here in TZXJ, right? Now, this is significant low, and then we are starting some sort of reversal to the mean or even a new bullish rally. Now, so far, it's only three waves, right? So if we agree this 1614 is going to hold, which is 2016 low, actually, we have two options here in terms of counting. One is 1212, which is actually the uh, aggressive count, right? The more aggressive count. And the second option is labeling this as a diagonal, like a leading diagonal. One, two, three, four, and then you make a five, and then this is ending five waves, and this will be ending with one over here, right? So I'm just uh, downgrading the degree here. This one in red, two in red, three in red, four in red, five in red, ending one in blue. And then you got a bigger pullback in the two in blue, correcting this rally. And then after that, we rally higher again in with three, right? So those are the only two options I can think about. If you agree with my assessment, 1614 should hold, right? Either it is a nest, what, what I'm showing here, or it is a diagonal, right? Either way, whether you want to call it a nest or a diagonal, either way, it is risk to reward wise, right? It is favoring more upside rather than more downside. Okay, now you can also take a look at the monthly. The range is getting narrower and narrower. I can draw some sort of triangle here. It's getting compressed, right? And I think the break, in my opinion, most likely is to the upside. And if it is, then it's going to be a pretty significant break because this is also multi-year consolidation and it's getting narrower and narrower. So it's kind of like the volatility is dying down and then it's suddenly breaking out. Then the volatility is going to spike up and then it's going to run, right? And again, since we think it's not going to break 1614, so chances is most likely it's going to break higher rather than lower, right? And so this is the monthly idea. Uh, so the way I like to do a sort of analysis is to explain the logic, guys. Uh, I, I don't claim that the count is always going to be correct because there is always multiple different counts, alternate path. But at least I can explain the logic and you can decide yourself. Do your own due diligence, combine it with your own analysis, combine it with your own style, fundamental or whatever it is. And then come up with your own decision, right? I think that's the, the whole idea. So this is not something to tell you what to do, right? This is not spoon feeding you to buy, to sell, things like that, right? But it is uh, really helping you to think about it yourself uh, with your own approach and also my idea here, okay? So again, we are getting you know smaller and smaller on the compression and then i think more likely than not the break most likely is going to break higher now let me go down to the lower time frame this is the monthly time frame right so i'm going to go to daily time frame now we get this marginal low in the market so it's still very weak right now and they continue to make a another low here but a couple of observation here that i want to point out is the idea that um, again, if I go to the monthly, the most important low is this low here. Uh, this is also quite significant in my view, uh, which is this 2613. Now, if we go with this observation here, which is this rally, right? This rally, I'm focusing on this rally. That does look like a five waves, right? It does look like a five waves. Now, uh, I'm counting this one, two, three, four, five, and then a flat EBC, and then starting one, two, three, four, five again. But again, I want to focus primarily on this area here, where after we make a low here, we got a five ways up. So that means I think uh, if this five ways up is real, we should be technically be able to hold above this low before we start running higher. Now, despite the weakness we see in the market right now, uh, in the miners, right? I thought originally I thought this this is the end of the correction right here. I thought, but apparently not. Apparently, we still continue to extend lower. So for now, I you know I'm looking for a little bit more extension lower. But the idea here is since it does seem kind of look like a five waves up from here, especially if you look at the daily time frame here, it kind of looked like a five waves. 
so the idea that I have here is that as long as we stay above thirty dollars sixty cents, then this pullback here uh, should should not extend too much lower, right? Well, it can go. I mean, thirty three dollars and thirty dollars is like ten percent, right? Technically, we can we can go to thirty one, let's say. But all in all, I think uh, as long as we stay above thirty dollars sixty cents, we potentially can start sending higher again because of what looks like a five waves. If it breaks below. Right, if it breaks below that uh, 360, then it's gonna retest 2613. Right, this is again the key level, which we uh, no, this is the key level is actually this 1614. My bad. So, um, if it breaks below, technically we can retest 1614 again. So, I can move it like a E, B, C, like this, and move it like a 2. So, I think really the key is the 1614 here, guys, as long as we hold above it uh, we should be looking higher and I think most likely it's gonna hold above with two as well and that's why I'm drawing this really narrow narrower triangle here I think we may continue to chop around within this triangle for a while until we finally break higher okay so that is the idea here guys right so again I'm looking into the big picture I'm looking into the more important stuff here. I'm not looking for like Indra day trading or you know day trading or things like that. Um, but it's to give you a uh, a bigger picture on the miners right now. Okay, so that's uh, what I want to uh, talk about today. And uh, I'll see you all again next time. Have a nice day, everyone.